Today, I'm going to introduce you to Patty. She's our CSA manager, and she's the one who handles all of your home deliveries, all the pickups. She deals with all of your accounts. So if you ever have any questions about CSA, Patty is the one to talk to. She is going to open up the box and tell us what's inside today. Hi, Patty. Hi there. Hi. Okay. So today we've got a CSA large box for this week, and I'm super excited to see what's inside and see what Joni Newman's going to make for us as a recipe creation with what's in here. All right, so let's open this up. All right, so it looks like we've got some rainbow Swiss chard. Nice and fresh. We've got, oh, radish microgreens. Let's open it up. Show you how beautiful that is. We've got a nice bunch of radishes. Okay, looks like in here we've got some baby bok choy. Yummy. One of my favorites. And oh, look at this beautiful head of purple cauliflower. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So beautiful. Can you imagine this on your table? Got a nice head of broccoli. And oh, some super healthy green spinach. That. All right. Oh, we have one, two. Nice little heads of romaine lettuce. Those are so cute. Super cute. Crisp. Got some nice citrus here. Look, we've got some navel oranges. Oh, that's a lot of them. That's a lot of oranges. See if they don't roll away. And we've got some, let's go with the citrus here, some lemons. Fresh lemons and some nice pesticide free Fuji apples. Mm. Crisp and sweet. So that is our CSA box for this week. We can't wait to see what Jody's going to make for us. And we also want to hear from you what you're going to do with your veggies this week. So let us know. Thanks, Patty. Up close and personal with some ingredients here. That spinach, radish, I believe these are radish microgreens, baby bok choy, that gorgeous purple cauliflower, rainbow Swiss chard, a nice head of broccoli, that beautiful hydroponically grown lettuce, those lovely citrus fruits, the navel oranges and lemons, and Fuji apples. Stay tuned, I think I see some tacos in our future. I'm pretty excited about this box this week. Uh, as you saw Patty show you, there were some amazing veggies and fruits in this box. So I got inspired to make tacos. We're gonna make some veggie tacos with an apple and broccoli slaw in a citrus vinaigrette with the purple cauliflower as the meat of the tacos. So we're gonna start off by making the slaw. It's a very simple slaw. We're gonna let the veggies and the fruits do all the work. We're gonna start by using some of this uh, beautiful uh, rainbow Swiss chard, but we're only gonna use the stems for the slaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the little tips because they tend to get a little ugly. I do that with my celery or anything like that. I'm gonna throw those away, I'll put them in my garbage bowl for now, and then I can turn them into veggie stock later. So I'm just gonna use the stems. We're gonna use the greens later. So I'm gonna set these aside. And we're just gonna cut these into little strips. Just like that, little sticks. If you don't want them that long, you can cut them in half too. It's kind of like a slaw. These are gonna add some crisp bite to that. I'm gonna throw that over to the side there. And we're just gonna make some beautiful, look how pretty that yellow color is. Isn't that gorgeous? 
If you've never used the stems of your rainbow chard before, know that they taste similar to celery, but they have a higher sodium content, so they're a lot saltier. So many people cut their leaves right off the stems and they throw away the stems and it breaks my heart because it's my favorite part of the chard. So definitely they're a good snack to you. You can add it to your crudite platter. Okay, a little bit more and I think we'll be good. I'm gonna go a little quicker here, but you get the idea, right? We're gonna cut them into little strips and add that to our slaw. Perfect, save the rest for later. That's about all we need for this one. Set these off to the side. Now, we're gonna do something fun. We're not gonna actually use the broccoli flowers this time. We're going to use the stems. So we're gonna trim off the flowers and you can save those, the florets. You can save those and use those later, steam them, use them for whatever you want. You guys know how to use broccoli, right? Broccoli's the easy edge. We're gonna put that off to the side. We're gonna actually use the stems. So this is a fun way to use up all of your veggies, not just the part we think we're supposed to eat. To make it easier, I'm gonna use a peeler. So I'm just gonna take my peeler and I'm just gonna cut little strips, just like that. This is also a great way to use um, broccoli stems in stir fries, salads, soups. We're just gonna shred it just like that. The peeler makes it super easy. Keep shredding that. It's a good way to use up stuff we would normally put in the garbage. So all the parts of broccoli are edible. The leaves, the stems, the florets, and if you are a farmer that didn't quite harvest all your broccoli in time, the little florets will actually blossom into these pretty little yellow flowers, and they taste amazing as well. Okay, that's about enough. I'm gonna throw the rest of this into my scrap pile to make into soup stock later or to compost. I'm gonna throw that right into the slaw. Then we're gonna add some of that nice lettuce that we had earlier. Beautiful. I'm gonna just take a couple of these outside leaves off because they're not so pretty, which is pretty typical with lettuce. Gotta get rid of a few of the outside leaves. And I'm gonna take the whole thing just like that and I'm just gonna make small slices just like that and that's gonna give us some nice little ribbons for our slob. The closer you get to the center, the more crispy it is. The farther out you go, the more tender it is. Okay, so now you see we've got some nice shreds there. I'm gonna add that to our slaw bowl. This will be yummy. Now, this is an interesting one we're gonna do. I'm gonna add some apples, okay? Now, I'm gonna slice right along the side of the core, just like that, so I get most of the apple without the seeds. And we're gonna cut this into nice, thin strips. Now, you can do this ahead of time, but if you do do this ahead of time, you're gonna wanna soak them in a little bit of water with a little bit of lemon juice in there. That way it doesn't turn brown because apples, once you open them up and they hit the oxygen, they start to oxidize and turn brown. So what we're gonna do is take each one of these pieces and just do some thin slices just like that. Then turn it over on its side and cut it into little matchsticks, that's what they're called. And these are Fuji apples, so they have a great flavor. Not too tart like a Granny Smith, but not too sweet like a Red Delicious. They're crisp, they have a nice juicy apple flavor. They're my favorite apple. These and Pink Ladies are my two favorite apples. So I already did some of that ahead of time, so I think that's plenty of apple for that. And don't forget, you can put fruits in your uh, veggie stocks too. They add a nice depth of flavor. All right, so I've got all the veggies that we need for the slaw. Throw those in with the bowl. And then now we're just gonna make a little citrus vinaigrette type dressing to toss this little slaw together. And this'll go on top of our tacos. So, we're gonna start with one of those navel oranges. Gonna slice it in half. 
If you watched the last video, you saw one of my citrus tricks where before you cut it and juice it, you roll it on the counter so that you break up a lot of those cells on the inside and more juice will be able to come out of the fruit. So for this, we don't need a whole lot. So I'm gonna use uh, this one half of one orange and I'm gonna use my little reamer just to get as much juice out as possible. Just get all that juice out of there. I know lots of people have fancy juicers, but this works just good. I mean, a little bit messy, but what else is new? I make messes in the kitchen all day. So my husband calls me a whirling dervish. Tasmanian devil spinning around. Look at all that juice. That's a lot of juice for a half an orange. It smells so good too. Okay, so we're gonna use half an orange and a whole lemon. Okay. Got juice in there. These are juicy lemons. These lemons are organic lemons from Tarsadia Farms in Riverside. And they're really sweet. I mean, they're still sour because they're lemons, but they have a, a much sweeter, very lemony flavor. So if you're a baker and you like to make muffins or pies or cookies, these are great lemons for that. All right, so we got one whole lemon and half of one of those oranges. If you have a smaller orange in your box, you can go ahead and uh, use a whole orange. Now we're just gonna add a few things to that and then we'll dress that slop. We're gonna add about a quarter cup of oil. This is just vegetable oil. You can use olive oil if you want to, but I feel like that flavor is a little strong. We're gonna do just about a tablespoon of rice vinegar. Then we're gonna add in some seasoning. Do a little bit of garlic salt, so we have a little salt in there. Brand new one. Add in about a teaspoon of garlic salt. Then we're just gonna whisk that together. And that's the dressing. Very simple. We're gonna let the veggies and fruit do all the work. Okay, that's all whisked together. We're gonna get a bowl, big bowl here. And we'll toss that salad together and then our slaw will be all done. Okay. Perfect. Toss that all in there. Give it a good toss. And then we're gonna let this sit so all those flavors can marinate together while we're prepping everything else. Throw that in the fridge until you're ready to serve so it stays nice and crispy. And that's all set. See that we have that little slaw. I'm gonna love those little pieces of apple in there. It's gonna give it a nice crisp bite. Check out this beautiful head of purple cauliflower. So many things you can do with it. You can treat it just like regular cauliflower, steam it, roast it, uh, stir fry it, add it to any of your favorite recipes. But today we're gonna do something a little bit more unique with this. We're gonna turn it into quote unquote meat. So this is gonna be the meat of our taco. We're gonna cut it up into little tiny pieces and then we're gonna saute it with some spices. And here we go. First thing, we're gonna put our pan on a medium heat, like a medium high. Add a little oil to that. And then we're just gonna chop this bad boy up. Probably only gonna use about half of this because this is a big one. So I'm gonna cut it in half, cut off the stems and leaves, use that for my veggie stock. Then we're gonna cut up all the little florets. We're just gonna chop them into like, think about ground beef, right? So we're gonna chop it into the, what ground beef would look like. You don't have to be fancy, just chop it all up. So easy. Don't have to have any fancy nice skills to do this. But I will tell you one trick when I'm chopping things is to keep your knife in connection with your cutting board. So your tip of your knife, keep it connected. 
That way you have more control as you're chopping. And you don't need to have an expensive knife. You just need one that's sharp, that feels good in your hand, and that the blade goes all the way to the base of the handle. This is a bad example because this particular knife doesn't do that. But when you're buying a knife, if you walk, go along the edge of the knife and you want to see that piece go all the way to the edge of your handle if you're buying a good knife. Um, you can get a good knife for 15 bucks at Smart and Final and that will be able to be sharpened and you'll be able to use it for years and years and years. You don't need to spend $300 or $400 on a fancy knife. You just need a good, solid knife. But this is what I had available, so this is what we're using today. It's nice and sharp though, that's for sure. So we just got it all chopped up, perfect. We're gonna take all that, we're gonna throw it into this nice hot pan. We're gonna add some seasoning. Now you can play fast and loose with the seasonings here. In fact, if you want, you can just use a packet of taco seasoning that you get from the store, which is usually what I do when I'm at home and making, making taco meat. But we're gonna use, so I just put a little bit of vegetable oil in the pan. Now I'm gonna add in just about a half teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin. A little bit goes a long way, so you just need a little bit. Depending on how much spice you like, we're gonna add in about a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Then we're gonna add in some dried oregano. If you have fresh, even better. But once again, cook with your uh, intuition. What's gonna taste good to you? What do you like in your taco meat? So we're gonna add in a little bit of oregano, probably about a tablespoon of dried oregano. A little bit of garlic salt. If you have fresh garlic, even better. And because I like it so much. I'm going to put some of this chili oil in there. It's really spicy, so you just need a little tiny bit. Oh my goodness. There we go. Just a little bit. I'm going to, get in it. I'm going to put my finger in there. So I get some of the actual chili in there. A little red chili oil. It's got garlic, usually just like garlic oil. It doesn't usually have salt in it. So we're just gonna get this all cooking. My, my nice red finger there. I told you I was messy in the kitchen. I'm all about having fun in the kitchen. If that means making a mess, I can always clean it up later. All right, just like when us ladies decide we want bangs. Just do it, go for it, cut those bangs. Don't grow back. All right, it's almost done already. It doesn't take long. All we have to do is cook it until it's tender. Because this is the meat, quote unquote meat of our taco. So we want it to be nice and tender. We have a lot of that crisp texture from our slaw. And also, oh my goodness, that smells good. Making me hungry. If you're following a no oil diet, you can do this uh, with a steam fry. If you're familiar with that term, you just add a little bit of water to the pan instead of oil. And that'll. And as long as you have a good nonstick pan, you could do the same thing without adding any oil. Because I know there's a lot of folks out there that are following a no oil, whole foods, plant-based diet. This would fall into that category if you don't add the oil with that vinaigrette. A little harder not to add the oil but you could just do a citrus dressing just eliminate the oil maybe add a little bit more garlic to give it a little bit of richness just about done so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to transfer this to a bowl and set it aside and we're going to use this same pan with all that flavor that's already in there to saute some green so i'm just going to take this off real quick Set that aside. We'll only need to add a smidge, little tiny smidge of oil since there's already oil in that pan. And now we're just gonna do some sauteed greens. 
We're gonna take that spinach, that bok choy, and those uh, greens from the rainbow char. We're gonna saute them with just a little bit of garlic salt and a spritz of lemon juice, because um, they have enough flavor all on their own. Sometimes all you need is a little salt and pepper, a little oil, or a little fat, and uh, you're good to go. So we're gonna start with the spinach. We don't have to do much to it, but I'm gonna give it a chop in half, just like that. I'm gonna add just a touch more oil to the pan. We're still keeping it on that medium high. Just about a tablespoon, not much at all. Now it's gonna look like I'm putting a ton of greens in here, but if you're at all familiar with cooking greens, you know that it is going to shrink down to nothing. You don't even have to cut these. You can just tear it with your hands, just like that. Pull out any ugly ones. And the bok choy this week, it's already trimmed, so that's nice. Just gonna throw it in there. And the char, we already used the stems for the slaw. And I'm gonna find the biggest leaf. Okay, here's a big leaf, that's a big one. I'm gonna put all the other ones inside that big one. Then I'm gonna roll it up like a burrito. That'll hold everything together. And we cut it into nice little ribbons, just like that. Now look at this big, full pan. In about two minutes, it's gonna reduce down a lot. This green reduced way down. So I'm gonna let them reduce down a little bit before I add any seasoning. If you have a wok, a wok is a perfect, I need to get myself a wok that works with induction so I can use that for you guys next time. Or a big pot, that works too. Just give it a few seconds. Turn it a few times so the heat can get up to the top. You'll see the bottom ones are already wilted. You can also put a lid on it for a few seconds and it'll steam itself, which I can do with these bowls, just like that. If you don't have a lid, you can do it that way. Have you ever seen the movie Chef? If you haven't seen the movie Chef, watch the movie Chef and watch the scene with the grilled cheese sandwich and how steamy and beautiful it is. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he uses the bowl steam method as well. All right. Give it a nice flip. I'm gonna use another spoon here so I can really get in there and flip it over if you have some tongs, that works too. Get in there, flip it over. Might have been a little bit uh, ambitious with the amount of greens I put in this little pan. That's okay, you'll see. They're gonna shrink down. There's gonna be barely anything in there. I saw a meme yesterday that was cracking me up. It was the, like one quarter cup of greens. And it said, this is 45 bags of spinach. And I was cracking up, because that is so true. Greens cook down. So did you guys make, <laughs> making a mess here. Greens um, for New Year's? I did. I made I made uh, broccoli greens for New Year's this year. A lot of people do collard greens, but just about any green is perfect. You just saute it up, a little garlic, a little oil, a little salt and pepper, you're good to go. I always like to add a little bit of lemon juice at the very end. See, now you see it's coming down. Starting to get really wilted. Coconut oil is a good oil to fry your greens in too because it's got that buttery, fatty flavor to it. You use a refined coconut oil so it doesn't have that coconut flavor. We're just using regular old vegetable oil, which is almost 100% of the time, it's uh, soybean oil. They just label it as vegetable oil. But you could use canola, you could use coconut, peanut, corn oil, whatever your favorite oil is. I've been playing around with avocado and walnut oils lately, but they're not expensive. There we go, it's almost done. I'm gonna throw that bowl on there for just a second more. These will be nice and cooked down. About five minutes total, should be plenty of time to cook all your greens. Get your lemon ready. Do 
These are so juicy. You can look at that. So juicy inside. These are the best lemons I've had in a really long time. All right. So it's up to you how tender you want your greens. The longer you cook them, the more tender they're gonna be. If you like, I don't wanna say mushy because sometimes really cooked down greens are technically mushy, but that's the way they're supposed to be. I like to leave just a little bite to them and also because I love that color. See how bright that is? Beautiful color. And then we're just gonna brighten up that bitterness because these are pretty bitter greens with a little spritz of lemon juice and a little bit of garlic salt. Oh, we'll put that garlic salt. Oh, I don't know where it is. Just gonna sprinkle on, you know, this garlic salt, Laurie's garlic salt with the parsley in it is like a secret ingredient here at the farm. If you ever come to any of our cookouts, we have two secret ingredients. This is one of them. And the other one is our smokehouse maple that we use on our chicken. So those are both really easy ingredients to find because we like to savor the flavor of the veggies instead of all this other stuff. Keep it nice and simple. A little garlic and a little lemon. Have that right in there at the end. So it doesn't cook off. And that's it. Greens are done. Okay, we're at the final stage where we get to heat up our tortillas and assemble our tacos. But right before I do that, I'm just gonna show you my favorite way to use these radishes. Um, there's two ways I like to use them. Today we're just gonna chop them up and let their peppery, sharp flavor do all the work. Um, I'm gonna just chop them into Little half moons. So you're gonna cut one edge, cut the other edge, cut it in half. Then we're just gonna do a nice thin slice, just like that. And then we're gonna throw those on top of our tacos. Okay. I already did some, or Patty did them for me. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> and they're ready to go. Now let's talk for a second about tortillas. Corn tortillas come to you only par-baked. They're not fully cooked. So what makes me really sad is to see someone go to work on all this prep, and then they put their taco in a sad, uncooked tortilla. So it's very important to cook your tortillas the rest of the way. Put them on a flat griddle or a, a dry pan. You can even grill them if you want to. And one of the fun things I like to do is I like to use two tortillas for each taco because inevitably I put too many fillings in my tacos and half of the stuff falls out onto the plate. So if I use two tortillas, pick up with one tortilla to eat it, stuff falls out, I get a bonus taco! <laughs> Who doesn't love a bonus taco? So nice high heat, just gonna let those heat up and get nice and brown on each side and then we'll put our tacos together. They're nice and toasty, even though they're not quite as brown as I would like them, that's okay. We'll survive. So remember, two tortillas per taco. I'm gonna line them up here on my plate so I can do all three of them at the same time because we always do three tacos, right? Trace tacos when we serve them up. Okay, and we're gonna start with our beautiful sauteed greens. We're gonna start with those on the bottom. These are healthy tacos too. All these greens with all that iron in there. Delicious. Okay, so we've got the greens. Now we're gonna add in our taco meat that we made out of cauliflower. How do you guys say it? You say cauliflower? You say cauliflower? I don't know why I say cauliflower. All right, there's the meat. I'm gonna add that delicious apple broccoli slaw right on top. Just like that, make sure we got apples in all there. Okay. 
We have made apple carrot raisin slaw. That's good too. Shredded carrot, shredded apples and raisins in lemon, like a lemon juice dressing. It's really good. Very simple. Now, take a couple of those nice sliced radishes. Put them in there. That color, so pretty. These are so colorful. Now, sprinkle on top some of those lovely radish microgreens. Aren't we fancy? Doesn't that make it just look fancy just by putting it on there? And normally I would say serve your tacos with a wedge of lime, but since we have these delicious lemons, each taco is going to get its own wedge of lemon. Just like that. There's our tacos. For the full recipe, go to TanakaFarms.com and we'll have all the recipe measurements and instructions there for you. Thanks for watching. See you next week.